It's not a matter of if, but when. Someone will steal your personal information. One woman says nearly $200,000 of payday loans and interest are falsely in her name. And that Chicago police aren't doing enough with evidence that was handed with them. Consumer investigative reporter Jason Knowles here, and he got some answers from police. Well, Ron Cheryl, we did get some answers. Chicago police say in 2013 there were more than 13,000 reports of identity theft or other similar crimes. The department also recently beefed up its financial crimes unit. But one suburban woman tonight is questioning why two suspects who may have taken her identity haven't been charged. I'm right. still trying to clear my name. Cindy Foglio showed the I-team a giant stack of paperwork full of credit checks, collection agency notices, and $2,500 of payday loans in her name. They've ballooned to almost $200,000 now with a 499% interest rate. I think my blood pressure went through the ceiling a few times. And she says after discovering the identity theft in February of 2013, she turned to the Algonquin Police Department. In August of 2013, more than a year ago, investigators there handed the case over to the Chicago Police Department because the potential suspects live in Chicago. According to this Algonquin PD report, subpoenaed information shows that the online payday loan was withdrawn from an IP address on the south side. The report lists suspects' names, a phone number, and even an email. So, I mean, do something about it. The CPD told the I-team it's still investigating, but that it's not a slam-dunk case. Police wouldn't answer the I-team's specific questions about Foglio's concerns, citing that ongoing investigation, but did talk about the challenges they face in crimes similar to this one. So why is an IP address not enough to arrest somebody? Well, IP uh, addresses, uh, they can be static or they can be dynamic. They're not always associated to a uh, fixed entity or location. So Sergeant John Lucky sort of says IP addresses can also be unsecure, meaning hundreds of other people could have hopped on that connection. But Algonquin police also discovered this in their report. They traced that payday loan money to a prepaid cash card, which was registered to one of the same suspects connected to that IP address. But for a nonviolent crime, even that may not be enough proof for prosecutors. If you can't assemble a complete case, usually success for prosecution is very minimal. Lucky, who is the commanding officer of Chicago's Financial Crimes Unit, says in 2012, more detectives were added to keep up with the growing number of cases. He says consumers should lock and secure Wi-Fi, shred documents, avoid giving your social security numbers even at the doctor's office, and never give out information to anyone who reaches out to you. It's not going to be fixed by law enforcement. It's not going to be fixed by the banks. ID protection company Credit Credit Sesame in San Francisco is offering free ID theft insurance, hoping customers eventually pay for some of their other services. Insurance could cover the cost of a lawyer, replacing stolen documents like birth certificates, or money lost if you need to take time off work. I have spent many, many hours looking and calling. You don't need identity theft insurance to cover fraudulent charges. In most cases, you wouldn't be held responsible anyway. And some experts say you should never pay for ID theft insurance or a policy. Plus, you may already have coverage built into your renter's or homeowner's insurance. Ron mm -hmm. Sherrill, we will let you know if police ever file charges in our victim's case. All right. All right. Great information. Thank you, Jason.